Warner Brothers is doubling down on live service games. But why does it think this is a good idea? Let's talk about it. Tam, why are we talking about Warner Brothers? Why not? Talk about Dune? I can always <laughs> spend the whole episode talking about Dune too. I'll yeah, take that I'm, down, I'm down for that. We're talking about Warner Bros. because they have provided some valuable insight into their video gaming strategy going forward, which may surprise you to learn is leaning into failures that they've had. Big, bold statement. I would I would say not necessarily failures. I would say things that Warner Brothers has proven to be inconsistent in. Yes, inconsistent and in some regards incapable of. So WB Gaming boss JB Perret discussed the company's strategy at a Morgan Stanley event and basically doubled down on free to play and live service. And mobile. And mobile. Um, all the best types of video games, I would just Look, say. before they took Peggle off iOS. Go it game. I think I maybe spent more time on that than any, any console game. game. Yeah, I agree. Um, so their recent gaming output has been focused on AAA. Mm -hmm. yep. AAA in the traditional sense that we know it of as like, you know, big budget, single player games. Yeah, so. To a degree. Suicide Squad, Gotham Knights, Mortal Kombat. Those are the other type. Um, Hogwarts Legacy. Hogwarts Legacy. Mm, does mul multi does Multiverses, does I that guess. Count? That was free. Kind of. Yeah, I mean, like, it still costs money to develop. So yeah. it kind of counts. Yeah, so they said they're going to focus on their core franchises and bring them to mobile and free to play mm -hmm. and live service and continue to invest in that live service model. Mm -hmm. The quote is Lucy, give us your best reading executive voice. <clears throat> The challenge we've had is that our business, historically, there has been very AAA console based. I don't know why I went American. Why did you go American? I don't this know. Guy's I, you said executive. Frenchy, like, I guess. Uh, and so, as you know, that's a great business. When you have a hit like Harry Potter, it makes the year look amazing. And then when you don't have a release, or unfortunately, we also have disappointments. We just released Suicide Squad this quarter, which was not as strong. It just makes it very volatile. So, when it comes to live services, the quote in particular was, uh, so rather than just launching a kind of one and done console game, how do we develop a game around, for example, Hogwarts Legacy or Harry Potter that is a live service where people can come today and live and work and build and play in that world on an ongoing basis? Is he trying to make a Hogwarts <laughs> metaverse? Like, trying to make PlayStation Hogwarts home. That's what he's trying to make. <laughs> God. Um, so the upcoming games they have include Harry Potter Quidditch Champions, mm -hmm. which is a Porky Games joint yep. uh, under that label. Mm -hmm. Wonder Woman yep. and uh, some free to play mobile games coming this year as well. What I, I feel like that's going to be House of the Dragon, given the fact that that's coming yeah. back in June. In terms of other Warner Brothers properties, um, I t yeah, I can't think of anything right now. No. I mean, like, this is Dune now, Dune is Funcom, right? Dune, Dune Awakening is Funcom legendary i think yeah. level infinite yeah. uh, i don't think warner brothers is involved in that so the the part that's worth discussing here is basically what they said is these are the these are the games that we think we're focusing on live service works for us which is traditional thinking business wise in the industry correct the issue with that is the games that they've had success with are the opposite so hogwarts mm. legacy especially mm. that that is at what like a, it, was the a, biggest, it was the biggest selling game of last year. Yeah, yeah. It, it made over like, 20 million copies sold, which is huge. Yeah, a, a massive, massive number. And uh, a lot of the games that they've been most successful with or known critically acclaimed for are stuff like the Batman Arkham series. Lego. Lego? Lego, 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 except for Lego Dimension. Yeah, Shadow of Mordor for sure. Yep. Shadow of War, not as much. Not as critically qualified, acclaimed. Yeah, qualified with they jammed some heinous microtransactions yeah. in that one. Um, also, that end game was rough. shocking. Yeah. So the question is, why is it doubling down on this business model and game formats that it shows isn't really isn't really capable of executing on? It feels very weird because it feels like the rest of the industry is having the games as a service bubble burst. Yeah, but not Warner Brothers for some reason. It makes all the sense in the world for them to double down on the IP that mm. they have. And Warner Brothers does have a very, like, some of the best known properties mm. in entertainment. Mm. Like DC, Game of Thrones, Harry Potter. And they also called out, in particular, Mortal Kombat. Yeah. 
yeah so the, it, uh, what i think is happening is like it's a classic like it's, it's a risk aversion it's risk aversion but it's also like the the poisonous allure of potential value versus actual value mm. like a lot of these companies what they see is the successes of the world the fortnite fortnite has a lot to explain <laughs> it's got a lot to answer for but like it is such a gargantuan success and it is the epitome of the games and service model that pretty much anyone and everyone will shoot themselves in the leg with hopes of potentially reaching some level of that success so it's the potential value that those of that approach has versus the actual value which they have shown isn't working out for them especially for like gotham knights and and suicide squad like those they, they're hoping that they can one day achieve it and it's kind of like self-sabotage in a lot of ways in in getting there which is rough yeah we've seen warner brothers do this before where they've leveraged their ips to try and make something long lasting and ongoing like they tried their skylanders which was lego dimensions yeah back in the day yeah which was on paper a very smart idea did well for a little bit did not have um did not have the legs of the like a skylanders plastic legs though. yeah yeah yes. the issue that we have is something that you alluded to which was like they have some of the most lucrative properties known to humankind under mm. their stable um but they're still struggling to make the most of them and that's a major issue and i think it comes a lot from what i've learned what it seems like we've we're learning is that they're very much focusing on the trend and not what works best for the property yeah because can you even chase a trend if it takes you five years to make a game no you can like and we've talked about that before, it happens but... a lot yeah so the strategy they have isn't leveraging an ip it's leveraging a business model and then forcing the ip to adhere to that business model which is exactly why gotham knights and suicide squad fell apart like it is like they were games that you play and you with 100 percent accuracy can tell this was not built to be like this it feels so weird to say I'm, I'm not worried about wonder woman but like i really wonder what that game is going to be because yeah. and, the, and the other thing as well is that like if you're talking about leveraging strengths mm. warner brothers games has one of the coolest and most talked about game mechanics ever yes in the nemesis system. nemesis system and then you know after shadow of war just like no game has utilized it. assassin's creed tried i would be extremely surprised if wonder woman doesn't do it but then at this point i'm also expecting to pay zeus for colored loot in this wonder woman game which is going to be the thing that kills it right like it's going like, to be bizarre but i could just see all that stuff with wonder woman being so egregious yeah there's this like too i much. can already see the destiny cursor i can see the tiered loot yeah lasso and, of truth different colors that's gonna be wild i think the the other major issue is like what is the ongoing impact of them really committing to this mm. approach and i think the issue that for me and us i think as people who love video games broadly everyone is worried about is like it's devaluing a lot of the most talented developers that we have right now mm. i am um, i feel so bad for rocksteady like mm. we all know with certainty what that developer is capable of mm. even with like high profile departures this you can play suicide squad and you can see so much of what rocksteady is known for mm. there and the problem is it's the extra stuff that the business model side of it that comes in so it's like devaluing one of the best developers in the business and people are a little less effusive about how good rocksteady is now which is such a shame yeah um and the same goes for like wb montreal because like they were for the longest time talked about as the team that made secretly one of the best batman games with uh, origins. origins yeah and people were excited for what they were doing next and they got done dirty again yeah. <laughs> like it's so unfortunate and then on top of that is like they are damaging ips in the gaming space i describe it as like the david ayer suicide squad effect that movie really impacted the market ability of suicide squad going forward the like gun the great. james gunn one was good I know, like but james gunn i know for a fact like anecdotally multiple people who are like i'm not going anywhere near no mm -hmm. suicide squad nonsense ever and then i would you could argue that it also impacted rocksteady's game like the yeah. the legacy of suicide squad was her going forward by that and i feel like that can continue to happen mm -hmm. like and it, and it could also happen 
to all of these IPs that they have, which if they don't treat with more respect and more acumen and like sharpness around how they translate them into video games could render some of the most well-known IPs inert in the video game space going forward. They're doing a Superman movie. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. A few years ago, if you had said, who do you think should make a new Superman movie, uh, make, super, make a new Superman game based on the new Superman movie, who would you have said? No, Rocksteady. Rocksteady. Rocksteady just put out a game with Superman in it and it is shocking what they did with that character, <laughs> what happened to that character. And it's shocking because he needed to function in a game where you shoot things and punch things for extended periods of time. I destroyed Superman and it was yeah. the most, I was crying as I did it. I was like, King Shark is running rings around the Man of Steel right now and it is unbelievable, it's blasphemy. Yeah, so the future, what does what the future hold for them? I'm a little worried about the future. I, you know, specifically we talked about Wonder Woman. I hope that, you know, that studio knows what they're doing. Yeah, well, that's the thing. A lot of them left to make the Black Panther game. Yeah, um, I mean, that studio knew what it was doing. There was a like, fair few people who no doubt would have got that ball rolling in the right direction. And I hope that the game that they make is the game that they want to make mm -hmm. as opposed to the game that WB need, thinks it needs right now. And I think like the, them stepping out of the way, WB stepping out of the way of the developers is the best chance of them succeeding in the video game space mm -hmm. going forward. It doesn't look like they want to do that. And... I mean, I, I'm intrigued by mobile space, though. Yeah. Because remember, I mean, admittedly, it was something they nicked. But Fallout Shelter yeah. being a great use of mobile and the Fallout things. And then, do you remember Warner Brothers released Westworld? Westworld Shelter. It, it, <laughs> and then they got sued because they thought that they just lifted assets and shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they do have potential to do that in a mobile space. But also, like... I want it, like, a House of the Dragon match three game. That's, yeah, yeah, that would be pretty I cool. I don't want that. That would be pretty cool. I'd love that puzzle, puzzle quest, House of the Dragon. Let's go. Um, but yeah, there, there is potential in those. Uh, the tricky part is like it comes with a caveat. It's not our type of video game experience, is yeah. it? It's like not what we want. That's not to say we don't play them. I play mm. crazy amount of mobile games these days. Mm. But like, I want to get a Batman Arkham game in the Wonder Woman universe, in the, yeah. in the you know, whatever other property the house of the dragon or whatever it may be the west world universe all that kind of business like a witcher ass game of oh Thrones god game yeah that would be, be great really cool. give us that i i implore i i just constantly i'm like please you, you can't be this like blind to what is going on especially as the industry is actively like turning away from that business model mm -hmm. one because the audience doesn't want it and two because the industry economically is actually like moving mm -hmm. in a direction that is going to make that very difficult to sustain mm -hmm. barring the biggest companies like sony so yeah so release that wily e. coyote movie cowards oh yeah dude i mean we can't end this episode without saying um damn thank you for everything uh rooster folks at rooster teeth, teeth yeah. we are really sorry about what happened a wb company for yep. a little while no yeah, yeah, Born yeah, by the yeah, Discovery. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. was, I guess. God, what it feels so weird. Incredible group of people there. Some of the most, like, shining talent in this industry and, like, content creation online. Changed the way that Let's Plays, I mean, yep. literally invented, not invented the Let's Play, but, like, had Did, had the domain, like, yeah. YouTube.com slash Let's Play. Yeah. And um, even, like, the Machinima stuff, Red mm -hmm. versus Blue, like, all the Funhouse stuff, the, Ruby. even the Ruby news reporting stuff, like, mm -hmm. We know a lot of people there and they are incredible talents and if you are in the need for anyone who wants you want to make content whether they're so multidisciplined like if you have a job in any sort of creative space i bet you can find someone who's incredible on the rooster teeth kind of like crew that is looking for work right now so shout out to you yep. all of you and also release the wily e. coyote movie release that movie i want to know what Damn. it's about everyone says it's good things uh anyway um that's another episode of spot on um we'll be back well i'm out next week so you'll have to find we'll someone else to host out, with yeah. um but thank you again for watching uh we'll see you next time bye